Hi, this is Lori Wall, and I'm going to give you a brief overview of visual communication using concept and color and some consumer boards um, and how those tools are used to communicate a designer's ideas, target consumer. This is a presentation that I gave at Textile Base Camp in 2022. I redid this presentation with some high school students the following week, and I have made some edits to some of the content um, that I presented during Textile Base Camp. So I think I've refined the presentation and the process a little bit better for high school students. So we use, uh, why do we use visual communication tools in the apparel industry? We use this to clearly communicate what we're trying to say or what we're thinking about. The target consumer is a big one. Um, a target consumer is much, much more than just age and gender. Um, students tend to default to those two things. Sean Mendez and Lil Nas are ex the same age. They're both males, they're both performers, but their personal style is very, very different from one another. So a consumer board, a target consumer board will clearly show what a designer or a company means by a particular consumer um, and go beyond age and gender. In, uh, when we're doing consumer research, we look at a whole range of demographics um, beyond age and gender, uh, marital status, income, occupation, ethnicity, geographic, location, and then a whole range of psychographics. And the psychographics are becoming more important as people are putting more value on um, sustainability or ethical manufacturing processes or wanting to know more about where the product is produced. So there's a lot more that goes into the consumer than just age and gender, and a visual board really helps communicate that to people who may not quite understand what consumer you're talking about. There's, here's some quick examples of some female target consumers. Um, Ralph Lauren's consumer uh, is very conservative, um, stylish, um, prefers higher quality, high priced items, as compared to Shein, which is a mass market brand, a much younger um, consumer, uh, very much of kind of the throwaway type of product. Um, again, it's a female consumer. The same consumer could buy from both, possibly, but very different aesthetic. And then Trina Turk, the, her consumer is probably in the same range as the Ralph Lauren consumer, but very different um, aesthetic, very different end use, very different... Um, uh, just very different feel altogether. So that's why it's really important to start with your target consumer when you're working on a design project. Who are you designing for? And that way when we move into color and we move into concept, we, we can evaluate the color based on that target consumer. So color is really important. If we just present a color stack of colors um, in equal size, we're not quite sure how you envision using them. The images help show, uh, well, in this case, I'd be using more dark colors with little pops of these brighter colors, um, or to let somebody know that the, um, the colors do hang well together and work well together. Uh, we use boards to explain or show our conceptual ideas. Um, it's very hard to tell somebody what you're thinking about in your mind. A board shows that much, much more clearly. Um, this is how I perceive translucence. Somebody else may look at this and say, oh, that's really more skeletal or more of an x-ray type of concept. Um, this is a, a project example from one of our students. This is the uh, target consumer board for Daisy Skateline. This is a female skateboarder. Um, she's an authentic skateboarder. She rides her, her longboard um, frequently. She's also fashion-oriented. She's multi-ethnic. She's an urban gal, and that comes across in the boards, uh, in the images on her board. Her concept for her line, she was very interested in pops of color, the reflection of color, um, bilateral symmetry, um, lots and lots of color coming out of street art, coming out of the lights, just the vibrancy of the city, and you'll see that in her line. She did a second concept board because she has a 3D print element on her garments where she you really literally used bilateral symmetry and this idea of armor and armor that overlapped or protected or um, was flexible. 
Uh, her colors were also drawn from um, images from the city as well. Um, as her line progressed, she moved away from the darkness, and, and I have some pictures of her final projects, and she really focused more on the colors. Uh, these are her line drawings that she did of her collection, and then the actual garments after she produced them. And you'll see there's a lot more color in here than we see on her boards. She, she shifted more to showing the, the brights and, and reflectivity. So um, remember when you're putting together a design presentation and you're, you're showing your visual boards that the presentation is not for the person doing the presenting, but rather for the people present during the presentation. So you're trying to communicate your ideas, your thoughts before you start designing. Uh, image resolution is really important. The image on the left shows adequate resolution, whereas the image on the right is not enough. If you don't have enough image resolution, you can't enlarge the images. Um, you really are stuck with using that image at a very small size. So if you are in the habit of choosing images with large resolution, adequate resolution, then you have a lot more flexibility for scaling when you're laying out your boards. Um, you do need to consider if the board is going to be viewed digitally or if it is going to be printed. You can get away with pretty low resolution of images if you're only going to be looking at it digitally. Although um, there are some limitations with a 72 dpi image. 150 dpi and higher, that's the minimum resolution for printing. That will allow you to take a small image and scale it up. Um, without losing any of the crispness of the image. So I generally have my students, and for my personal work, I stick with 150 dpi or larger. You need to use a consistent layout throughout your presentation for all boards. So the, the presentation should appear to come from the same person, to be about the same consumer and about the concept and for that season, and it's, it's part of a professional presentation. Um, the layout choice, there are many different layout choices, this is just a brief list of them, um, can impact your presentation. It can be part of the, the concept, it can be part of the feeling of the consumer, uh, but whatever you choose it needs to be consistent on every board. So this is a linear layout, this is a very minimal approach. Uh, we see this in designers that um, maybe don't have a lot of um, um, lavish detail, the lines are smoother, cleaner. Um, it, it's, it's a difficult board layout to pull off because really your images all need to be portraits so that they can be as large as possible so you don't have too much white space. This is a brick layout. The images are butted together. There's no extra white space. This is a really nice way to do a board um, because it fills the entire board with image. You can do the same thing, but put in these white gutters. Um, it, it's a slightly different feel, but again, it's very organized, um, and it, it shows off the images really well. It is important, though, that this gutter, the space between the images, be as uniform as possible, if not exact. Overlapping or toss, this is kind of a scattered way of showing images. This is a little more informal. We see this with kind of more irreverent consumers or edgier brands or street street kind of product. Um, it is, it's very acceptable, but it does have some limitations with kind of the order you put your images in and uh, the images that appear underneath are sometimes occluded by the images that are overlapping. Human being images, when you're working on your target consumer, should face inward. The only exception is your central image. She is looking off to the left. I would probably go out and find a different image for her so she's looking more at the viewer. Uh, but all these other images, she is facing towards the center of the board. And then we have this really nice kind of X that's appearing in the background with the this rock and the landscape. So this is kind of a harmonious uh, arrangement of the images. Compared to here, I've moved them around and the, this woman is running off the edge and she's kind of looking off in the other direction and the backgrounds are kind of chop up the board. We've got a little bit of kind of you know, the, these two images are parallel, but the rest of it is, is kind of a mess. So um, it is important to pay attention to, to the direction that your um, 
images are facing, your humans are facing, so that you don't inadvertently draw your viewer's eyes off the board. So we're going to use a few free online resources to find some high quality images. Um, I'm going to demonstrate Unsplash and Pexels. Free images is another site. And then for color, uh, we're going to use the multicolor image search engine. And then uh, Chloe demonstrated coolers when, when we did the class for Textiles Basecamp. And I spent a little more time in coolers, and it is a really great palette generator. And it has a way to eyedropper or sample colors from an image that you find. And so I think this is really a better choice than ColorRow. Both Pantone and ColorRow are professional color resources. Um, it's good to know about. They're great to go visit, but I think Coolers is a better resource. So thanks, Chloe. And then I'm going to use Google Jamboard to build um, my boards in. Uh, I find it flexible. Um, some people prefer Google Slides. Padlet's another great resource. Um, but I was deliberately focusing on collaborative spaces because sometimes it's nice to do team projects. So the setup for the for the project is you are an apparel designer at an apparel company and are preparing to design a line of apparel, that is clothing, for an upcoming season. So you're going to choose a consumer. It came up in the presentation during Textiles Base Camp that how do you get students um, started? Do you give them a prompt? And yes, I, I went ahead and did this with my high school students and it worked great. They get to choose one of these four. Professional was kind of confounding, but it can be professional whatever. Uh, we had a professional drag queen, we had a professional uh, rodeo, uh, barrel racer, um, we had a professional um, weightlifter. So it can, it can be anything they want. And then um, you need to decide what kind of apparel you'll be designing for this person. You know, what is the category? And then I had them draw a concept and a color prompt from two bags on the table. And I provided uh, little pieces of paper with these concepts and little pieces of paper with these colors. And so they got to choose the consumer and they got to choose their product type, but then they received a prompt for the concept and color. And that helped move the project along pretty quickly. And they had fun. They had a lot of um, good conversations about, well, what, what are holes? What could holes be? And um, what does utility look like? And, and they, it, anyway, it kept the project going forward. Okay, so these are the boards that I built uh, for the, um, for the workshop and um, I'm just going to add to these. So I'm going to go to Pexels. This is Pexels.com and I can search in here for images. So I'm working on this cowgirl theme. Um, so maybe I'll put in cowgirl. I'll see what comes up. And I've got some pretty good images. So maybe I like this one. And I'm working on a Mac, so I can just grab this and drag it and drop it onto my desktop. I can go back to Jamboard. I click on this mountain image, and I can add the image by dragging and dropping it into here. Okay, and then it appears, and I can add her to my board. So maybe I don't like this image anymore. I'm going to delete it, and she is going to replace that. So this is my target consumer board. And then this is my concept board that I'm working on. And so maybe I'm my idea is a new age cowgirl. We came up with utility lingerie. And so I'm looking for ideas to take my lingerie into a utility direction. And so maybe on these free picture websites, Unsplash and Pexels, I'm not finding the utility images that I want. So I'm going to do a Google search. So I'm just going to open a Google search here. I'm going to put utility apparel in here. And, you know, I've got a few images coming up that are kind of interesting, but I want to make sure that my images are a high resolution, that all of these images that come up in here are high resolution. So I can click on tools and I can change the size here to large. And then any image that appears in here is going to be 
a large, large resolution. So I can click on an image, and if I hover my cursor over it, you'll see right here it gives the pixel dimensions, 1,280 by 1,920. That's a good resolution. If these are like 120 by 200 or even 300 by 200, that's too small. That's going to limit my ability to use that. So I'm just going to pull that off here, and then I'm going to go back to my... Um, Jamboard page, I'm going to click on the add image, I'm going to drag that in. And then I have this, this guy here with his utility vest. So in general, when we're working on building a concept, I don't usually put a lot of apparel images on the concept board. Um, as you progress in your design experience and you progress um, through a college program, you have less and less apparel on here and more and more conceptual pieces um, so that you're not tempted to design something that already exists. But for this for this project, um, it, it's more about learning the process. Okay, so now we're going to move into color. And I have, a, this was a color stack I built um, last week, kind of off of this image. Um, so let's build a new one. So I'm going to come over here. I'm in um, Unsplash right now. And let's see, maybe I like this boat image. Maybe this is gonna this is gonna be my color story. So I'm gonna pull that off. And then I'm gonna go into coolers and I'm gonna start the generator. And it gives me, I can keep hitting the space bar and I can accept any of these color stories I want, which is a great way if you've got students that want to make a color story really quick. Um, you can, once you've got something you like, you can export it as an image. Um, give it a name, export it. And then on my Mac, it goes into my downloads folder or I can grab it right here. And then I have it and I can move it onto my um, color, color board that I'm building. Or I can click on this image of the um, photo or a camera and I can create a palette from a photo. And I click on it and I get this little pop up so I can grab my sailboat image. I can drop it in here and then it gives me, it builds me a palette. And so I can move the slider and it'll resample the image but all the colors are coming from within this image. I can't control where it's taking the color, but I can move this slider up and down and it'll modify the palette based on what's in the image. And so once I get it where I like it, I can hit next and then I can export the palette just like I did the previous one. Way, export. And it goes into my downloads folder and I can grab it. So now I have an image and a color palette to go with it. So I'm going to come back in here. I'm just going to move this image off to the side. I'm going to use select uh, the image upload icon. I'm going to bring in my sailing away color palette. And then I'm going to click the image icon again. And I'm going to bring in my sailboat picture that generated the palette. So now I have both in here. I'm just going to tip this guy up on end. And I can make him a little smaller. So there, I have my image. And I can go find more images. So we always rename the colors to go with our concept. So my concept here is this utility. So I would add a text box here and maybe um, the blue is foundation blue. So we can keep the the color name that was generated by cooler coolers on here um, but we can give it a name that's associated with our um, concept and then I can just copy and paste, and then give the next one a name. Oops. Okay. 
So the other color tool we used was um, the multicolor search engine. Um, we do typically on a color boards, we may have multiple images here. I'm just going to delete all of this. We usually show multiple images that support this color story. And so I need some more images that have these colors in them. I can go to Tenai Labs, this multicolor search engine, and I can put the colors in here that kind of match this um, sailboat picture. I'll have this open alongside of me. So I've got this dark oceany blue. Maybe that's a little bit deeper down here. I'm going to trash that one. And I've got kind of some kind of, it's more of an orange in here. And then I've got some light blues. And then I can change how much of the image, you know, kind of the proportion of these colors in there by moving these sliders. And this is pulling from Flickr. Um, so it's not all the images on the internet, it's some images on the internet, but it's a handy way to get some other um, images that might support the color, the color story that your student's looking for, that you're looking for if you're building a project. And so I like this one. I'm going to go ahead and click on the title, and it's going to take me into um, the full-size image. And then I have to click this download button here. And then I can choose what size I want to bring it down at. And the medium resolution is probably fine for my um, uses. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And it goes into my downloads folder. I can pull it off here. Then I can go back to my Jamboard, and then I can load it up here. That's a little more blue than my sailboat picture, so I might have to do a little more digging. I'll delete that one and try again. So the only other piece to the board building is this part. The um, information that is on your board needs to be in the same location on every board. So I have my uh, line title, New Age Cowgirl. The type of product I'm producing is Utility Lingerie. The season is Spring 2024, and then my name. And that appears in the same font, in the same location, in the same color on every board. And if I were to move into showing my designs, then that would also appear in the same location in the lower right. And then I would show my designs on this board. Make sure your students put their name on the board. We have a lot of difficulty with our uh, younger students. They seem to leave their name off. I'm not sure why. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at lwahl at uidaho.edu.